Are you looking to live in the South Bay of Los Angeles, close to the beaches, close to LAX, but also want that great small town suburban feel? And maybe you also want to be able to get more home for your money than you would in a beach city? Well, then you might want to check out Lomita. If you're looking for a great place to live, work, and raise a family, Lomita, California could be the perfect place for you. Today I'm getting into it all, what it's like to live in Lomita, affordability, lifestyle, schools, employment, how it compares to its neighboring cities, and everything you need to know if you're thinking about moving to Lomita. And at the end of this video, I'll be sharing an up-to-date exclusive list of off-market properties, so make sure you stay tuned till the end. In case you are new here, I'm Shira Adato, and I want to welcome you to South Bay Living YouTube channel, the go-to real estate channel for everything you need to know about living in the South Bay of Los Angeles. I have people reaching out to me all the time who are thinking of moving here, and I absolutely love it, and I would love to hear from you too. So if you're needing some help, please get in touch with me. All my contact information is here. I would be happy to help. So let's get into Lomita. There are five key aspects of a community I tell my clients to look for when selecting a new place to live. The first one is location. Lomita is a really cute little pocket here in the South Bay where the one meets the 213, also known as Western Ave. Its neighbors are Torrance and Carson to the north, Wilmington and San Pedro to the east and southeast, and it is adjacent to beautiful Palos Verdes and Rolling Hills which are some of the most beautiful neighborhoods in Los Angeles. It's fairly close to the 110 freeway if you need to commute to downtown LA or to get to the 405 to the west side. One of the greatest benefits of a place like Lomita is that it's a small city next to a big city. With a population of only around 20,000, it has a nice suburban feel, but still gives you access to everything a big city has, has to offer being so close to Los Angeles. Lomita is also not that far from Torrance, so you're close to the Del Amo Mall, or you could shoot over to the Hollywood Riviera to Riviera Village, so there's definitely plenty to do nearby, even though it's a smaller town. Lomita gets its name from the Spanish word for Little Hills. Development in Lomita began in the early 1900s when oil was discovered in the area, and then in the 1930s, it was mostly used for farming. By the early 1960s, all but approximately 1.9 square miles of the original 7 square miles of Lomita was annexed by Torrance, and what was left was officially incorporated in 1964. Today, one of the major differentiators between Torrance and Lomita, besides size, is that Lomita is served by the Los Angeles Unified School District. In the 80s and 90s, they tried several times to secede from LAUSD, but were not successful. So Lomita being part of LA Unified, I'd say is one thing that gives families with young kids pause when moving here. A lot of people move to the South Bay for the great public schools they have, like in, in, in Lomita's neighbors, Redondo Beach, Torrance, Palos Verdes, but not having its own district is I think one of the things that keeps the home prices a little lower in Lomita than its neighbors. If you wanna compare the school ratings and reviews, you can go to niche.com, and greatschools.org. You'll want to look up all the schools because the city has several elementary schools, including Lomita Park Elementary and Eshelman Ave Elementary, as well as two middle schools and one high school. Lomita has four main sections. The downtown area is the commercial area where the city hall is, community activities, the library, and quite a few shops and restaurants. All up and down PCH, there's plenty of shopping, and some bigger grocery store chains. Then there's Lomita Pines, which is my personal favorite part of Lomita. Lomita Pines is really a picturesque residential neighborhood. It's known for its beautiful tree-lined streets. The homes in Lomita Pines are mostly single-family houses that vary in architectural style and size and design. The west side of Lomita has lots of cute little homes, picket fences and nice lawns, and has some agriculture zoned areas. So you might see some homes with chickens. And then you have the east side of Lomita, which is really lovely and has a suburban feel with lots of cul-de-sacs. 
Next, you might be wondering who lives in Lomita and what is the cost of living? Lomita has a population of around 20,000. The whole town is just under two square miles and it has about a 50-50 ratio of homeowners versus renters. The median household income is approximately $85,000 per year and the median list price of the single family homes is around 900,000. Home prices have surged in the past few years as many potential homeowners were priced out of the beach cities and other popular South Bay cities like Torrance and Hawthorne also became too expensive. Lomita has several parks and recreational areas. One of the most popular is Lomita Park, which is a really nice playground, picnic areas, and a basketball court. Some local hotspots to check out are Burning Daylight Brewery, Great Beer, and definitely try their Birria Tacos. Also stop by Quarter Flow for a great cup of coffee and baked goods. And if you have little ones, the train museum is always fun to visit. Now, another important aspect to consider when moving is weather. Lomita enjoys weather similar to the beach cities and other cities in the South Bay, which tend to run a wee bit cooler than Los Angeles because we enjoy those cool ocean breezes and cooler evening temperatures. Year-round temperatures average in the 60s and 70s, with the hottest months of the year usually in August or September, when it can get up to 80 or 90 in recent years, but that's not generally typical. Winters average in the 60s and generally don't get much cooler than the 50s, and we generally have very little rain and low humidity. So now on to homes. Right now, as of this recording, there are only nine active listings made up of single family condo and townhomes. We are experiencing a severe inventory shortage in this area. Smaller starter homes can come in in the 700s, but you'll also find homes in the low 1 millions in Lomita. This home is a three bedroom, two bath around 1250 square feet with an updated kitchen and a nice size backyard just listed for 875,000, or you can get this larger home over 2,000 square feet on a cul-de-sac for 899, but it does need some updating. Then there's this little gem, a two bedroom, one bath, 852 square feet little bungalow, 979,000 because it comes with a 16,000 square foot lot. If you like new construction, there's a development that just came out and they're really beautiful townhomes selling in the 800s, but there are only three left. So if you want more info on those, please reach out to me as soon as possible. And here's a tip, whenever you are looking at new construction, you definitely want to have a buyer's agent accompany you on the initial visit. Otherwise, they could require you to use the builder sales agent, which is essentially like being unrepresented because trust me, they won't be looking out for your best interests. So if you're interested in new construction or you want an exclusive list of off-market properties, email me at homesbyshira at gmail.com. I work with buyers and sellers in Lomita and the surrounding South Bay neighborhoods all the time. So if you need to get any questions answered, I'd be happy to be a resource for you. Do not hesitate to reach out to me. There is so much happening in the market right now and things are constantly changing depending on when you watch this. Some of this information may have changed already. So it's always best to reach out to me for the most current up-to-date market info. So with that, Bye for now and I'll see you on the next one.